Welcome in to this week's Waiver Wire Picks of the Week. I am Jason Beckman. You can find me on Twitter at JR Bex. I'm joined by JP. You can find him on Twitter at Depp Scout. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, we you know run through about five or six guys that are going to be available in your most of your leagues. Um, we also have an article on the website that uh, accompanies this, which gives you 20 plus more names that you should be considering adding in your leagues. Um, if you want to get access to that article, you're going to go ahead and become a member. And you get not only the access to that article, but you're going to get the most accurate fantasy baseball rankings, according to Fantasy Pros. Uh, you're going to get some DFS, some betting projections, custom league advice on Discord, and more. Uh, you can sign up to be an all-access member today at fantasy6pack.net forward slash plans. Um, that's the business portion of the, the pod. Um, you did a great job. Thanks, buddy. We are back. <laughs> it is uh, week five, I think, depending on how you worked that first week. But um, we're back. We got a ton of night. We got a ton of good information for you guys this week. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and just jump right in it unless you have something to add. Nope. Let's go. Okay. First guy we're going to talk about here is Bailey Ober, starting pitcher for the Minnesota Twins um, with both Maeda. And now Tyler Maley going on the possible IL. Um, there's a rotation spot, if not too open. Um, so right now, um, Minnesota has recalled Bailey Ober from AAA. Um, he's been off to a good start here at AAA. Um, in his four starts down there, he's got a 2.55 ERA, a 1.0 WHIP, and a 30% K rate. Um, in his lone start this week, he did make a, a spot start last week. He went into the sixth inning, only gave up one run on three hits, and he struck out four. Um, you know, this guy's a sub four ERA in his career. Um, you get about a K per nine. He's going to give you those innings. Um, I think, you know, in, especially in, in like 12 team leagues, this guy yeah, needs to be added at least for this week, if not more. What do you think about uh, Bailey Ober? So if you've played fantasy last year, Bailey Ober should have been on your team, at least at some point, or you at least tried to get him. So this is not a first time we've ever heard of this guy type of thing. Uh, you know, Star Tribune had a fantastic article uh, the other day with uh, Rocco Badelli, uh, uh, the manager and I probably butchered his name. I apologize, but um, you know, he made a great comment and he said, look, we have a lot of depth and they're absolutely right. Right. So, you know, next man up type of situation, tons of injuries right now. So we should be expecting this, but like you said, um, we know what we're going to get. The one thing that's kind of different here, right? This is not a control artist. Uh, well, I mean, yes, he has a very low walk rate, but when I hear control artist, I hear somebody that doesn't have a lot of strikeouts. He has double digit strikeouts per nine. In triple a now that hasn't translated a lot into major leagues yet you know we, we looked at uh 8.2 k per nine last year and uh seven and the year before so you know it's not at his 12 and an 11 that we saw just crazy in triple a now that of course happens because of the quality of hitter in triple a as well but this is a good pitcher this is somebody who has some great stuff and who knows you know the twins might join some of the other uh, rotations out there might go to six man rotation as well. He's good enough to be in the starting rotation. He was one of the last people out uh, in spring training. So definitely somebody you should add. This is not some guy who's on a hot streak. This is a major league pitcher. So go out, Adam. He's going to be a great addition to your uh, lineup. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I'm going to get into someone that's had the experience. So we, we know what we're going to get from him. So definitely worth the ad. Uh, next guy we're going to go ahead and jump into here is uh, Jaren. Let me put it up on the screen here. Jaron Duran, uh, one of Boston's top prospects, I think, for a few years now, on the outfielder. Um, he's finally showing like he might belong in the major leagues. Um, so far this year, he has a hit in eight of his ten games he's appeared in, including five multi-hit games. That's one of those big, to me, that signifies someone that's there and, and can actually compete. Is someone that's getting, you know, everyone everyone can get a hit every four days or one out of four bats. But if you're getting multi-hit right. games. That shows a significant um, increase in plate discipline. Um, you know, more of a hit over power guy. He doesn't have that, you know, huge raw power that's going to give you like 20, 30 home runs, but gets on gets on base at a good rate. Right now, again, I, I've, you know, it doesn't seem like you know, Boston is one of the leading scorers in the league. So, you know, the runs will probably be there. The RBIs will be there. Um, the on base will be there. He even has two stolen bases. But again, who isn't stealing bases this year? But, you know, if you need a little bit of extra splash, Jaron Duran, your man. Um, I think, you know, this is a guy, like I said, he's been touted as a prospect for a while now. He's finally showing out. Uh, I, I'd be looking to Adam for sure. What about you? What do you think? Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I, um, uh, in the sense that, yeah, yeah, no, definitely Adam, right? I'm not disagreeing there, but this yeah. is somebody that definitely has home run power. Uh, so about two years ago, if I, I'm getting my timeline correct here, 
he went into an off season kind of workout regimen with his dad and he changed his whole physique about two years ago. He went from, I mean, look, most baseball players are pretty muscular, he, he, but he's jacked. I mean, we're talking like men's health magazine front <laughs> of the article all the time. And then this past, in this past year, this past off season, he somehow got bigger. Um, I'm not sure if they have to like make new arm holes for the guy or what, but I mean, he, he, strength is not an issue with him. So he's definitely changed himself as a hitter, especially, like I said, about two years ago, he definitely was more of a, I wouldn't say slap hitter because that's kind of insulting uh, for somebody like Duran, but you know, he definitely had doubles power. Now he definitely has home run power. Now you might remember his name from last year because there was a huge run on him on the waiver wires. He was pretty much hitting a home run every at bat in triple a then he comes to the majors and they put him in center field where he was in his natural position and he looked lost he was pushing too hard at the plate he was doing terribly in the field i mean he was just getting scorched in the media and then he had probably one of the biggest gaffes we've we saw last year when it came to fielding where he misplayed a fly ball and instead of getting up and hustling for the ball, he just kind of stood there or sat there, depending on what you want to say. And the person who hit the ball, I can't remember now, got an infield of park home run. And after that, you know, he got sent to AAA again, and he just looked lost. This year on the offseason, he did one particular change on top of, again, just getting bigger somehow muscular-wise. Uh, he set he's setting up with his hands much higher. Now, what that does is it stops you from getting under the ball. It stops you from sometimes, you know, uh, just trying to catch up with the ball. And when they sent him down, and this is a great article from MLB.com, uh, Alex Cora said when he sent him down to AAA at the end of spring training, he said, hey, look, I don't care if you go over 20, 20 for 20, do not change your hands, stay right there, use the whole field. And I mean, that's what he did. The yeah. thing is, is that what we've seen so far in the majors is two things. He's not striking out as much, like you said, but he's hitting these long doubles. He hit one into the triangle in, in Fenway, which is just an awesome kind of dead man zone, but he's hitting doubles like nonstop. Doubles power becomes home run power pretty quick, especially in Fenway. And if he just starts using the left field off the green monster, he's going to be great. But like you said, speed. Setting up the rest of the guys on there, you know, Casas behind him, et cetera. He's going to score a bunch of runs. And if he keeps doing this, you're going to look at somebody who has the possibility of doing 2020 easily, right? 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases. Love Duran, loved him last year, and love to see him kind of getting that confidence, which is really kind of the last step that he needed. Yeah, good call, Duran. I saw him the other day. I left the Boston game and I was like, that's Jaron Duran. Like, I think like last year and even the year before that, he was just like some, well, not scrawny, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Thin, thinner. Right. And he is now, and yeah, he actually looked Jack. And then the doubles is a good call. He has actually eight doubles and thirty nine at bats. So the, that's guess, like four, that's like four home runs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's a good call out. Um, but we're gonna go over to the next guy here. It's gonna be a the, another outfield here. We're gonna go with Brent Rooker. Um, yep. You know, the outfielder for the Oakland Athletics. For somehow reason, you know, everyone wants to dog on this on this offense and this team, but somehow they keep putting out um, you know contributions from um, guys you didn't expect, right? So another super hot start. Currently, you know, is that ultimate sexy slash line of three, four, five, which is a 300, 400, 500. Um, they're nice. actually slashing 695. Um, he's got a WRC plus of 205. Um, right. you know, again, even on the down offense, he's got 18 RBIs. Um, so, I mean, that's good enough for top 25 in the league right now. His seven home runs rank is the fifth best. I'm going to try to keep going. I mean, this guy is continue. Everyone wants to write him off. He just continues to produce. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think – it's definitely worth an ad, even in, I think maybe even in shallow league, some of these guys that aren't performing like a <clears throat> Tyler O'Neill, um, you know, Brent Rooker is there on the waiver for a lot of teams or in, in leagues. So um, I think it's a, a definitely an, an ad, but you're the, you're the yeah. expert. So let me know. So if you would have told me, uh, you know, at the beginning of the season, we're going to be talking a bunch of Oakland A's almost every waiver wire. Um, mm -hmm. I would have told you you're crazy. Uh, but, you know, this is a guy who, Nobody wanted last year. You know, he got DFA'd and I, he went to Kansas City. I think he went to San Diego. Uh, you know, he's always been known for, you know, when he was in with Minnesota, he was always known for that raw power. But he was basically Gallo where he couldn't, you know, make any contact. He was, you know, striking out some ridiculous percentage of the time. The thing is, is that, you know, obviously now when he makes contact, he makes legitimate contact. His, I mean, his hard hit rate is something ridiculous. I think it's like 50% or something along those lines. 
but he's always made incredibly hard contact. Just those strikeout percentages have always been high as well. I don't really know what's changed, but I'll tell you what hasn't changed is all the red on his um, on his page. Uh, so Codify just posted um, up on you know all his percentile ranks, and basically everything's red. I mean, we're talking about his exit velocity, uh, his on base, his Mac, uh, hard hit rate, all, you know, all around the 80s. Then you get the 95 plus percentage of expected slugging percentage. He's 98th percentile. Walk percentage, he's 94th percentile. So we're really looking at, again, kind of the three true outcomes hitter. But man, those two of those outcomes are really, really good. If he can, again, continue to cut down on those cha- the chase rate, which he's been doing really much better this season. And again, the, you know, the K's, if he could just, it looks like just touch the ball. Maybe if he just bunts, he'll hit home runs. I don't know. He has that much power. I love players like this. This is why we play fantasy. We love guys that hit home runs. I mean, let's be honest, right? Leagues is look for home runs or total bases. This is your guy. Will he continue to you know perform like this? I have no idea uh, at this point. I mean, he's shown this power before, but frankly, at the same time, we're going to be talking about pirates here at some point. Um, I assume, you know, I definitely missed it on the pirates and I definitely did not see Roker. In fact, I'm going to admit something. Um, I was in a 30 team league. Uh, I am in a 30 team league and I cut him in the off season because I was like, Oh, he's not going to get that bats because I had to bring up some other players. Yeah. And that was dumb <laughs> on my <laughs> part because I obviously saw this breakout coming like everyone else. No, go out, pick him up. He's going to be super fun to watch. And if you're not watching Oakland A's games, then you're probably like everybody else. But I, I watch them. He's really fun to watch. Um, and he's going to get a ton of at-bats. There's nobody else pushing him for at-bats. So what do we want in fantasy? We want opportunity and a guy who's massive and huge and hits tons of power. So, yeah, he, he fits the bill for those two things. So go out and get him. He's gonna have, you're going to have a pretty fun time. Yeah, there's one more quick call up that I saw on his, you know, page is is, is absurd. Is his ISO, which is at 419 right now. Yes. Yep. Um, for most people that may not know what ISO is, it's like you know the difference between batting average and slugging. And mostly, you want to go on like if you're getting 200, you're doing well. He's at right. 400, so just go ahead and do the numbers in your head. That's double better than like a good uh, ISO. So that's that's, that's video good. that's video game esque. I mean, that's <laughs> that's video game on easy, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, well, we're going to go from one team that we didn't think about we were talking about every week to another team that we didn't think we talk about all week, and that is the Pittsburgh Pirates and Mitch Keller, the starting pitcher. Again, similar to Jaron Duran, another prospect that people have maybe have had fatigue on. We've seen him come up. We've seen him struggle. Is this the year that Mitch Keller finally puts it all together and becomes that top pitching prospect that we thought he was going to be? Um, he continues to pitch well. He just had a 10K performance um, his last time out. He's had five consecutive quality starts. He now has 27 Ks to 11, uh, 12 walks. However, one thing I will preface, his next start out is against the gauntlet of the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, I believe the regression monster is coming from Mitch Keller. However, <laughs> I do believe this may be along the lines of what we he is capable of. I don't think this is a fluke. I think maybe, you know, just, you know, prospect – uh, progression is not linear, right? I mean, you can't just expect right. you got to continually go up, 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 up. He's going to have fault failures, um, but we know the skills have been there. Um, I would definitely be grabbing Mitch Keller in a lot of my leagues. What do you think? Yeah. So uh, I love that you said regression monster. Mike Curlin's regression right. monster, whenever he posts on Twitter, I love uh, d- uh, every time it's typically one of my players. So I don't like him right now. I yeah. think it's still funny. But definitely not enjoying it. And I, I love how many people don't get the joke. They're like, that's not regression. I'm like, okay, we get it. Yeah. But uh, Mitch Keller, uh, yeah, you're right. Prost, prospect fatigue for sure. But uh, Corbin Young on Twitter uh, posted this great kind of analysis between last year and this year, right? His Ks over walk percentage, right? You want higher the better. That means you throw in a lot of Ks and not you're not, you're not walking as many people. He's going from 11% to 18% this year. That's just insane. His swinging K rate, people swinging and just completely missing the ball, right, has gone from 8.7% to 10.7%. And then the other things, right, he's got a new cutter. And the velocity and movement of that have really helped him out along with, you know, um, just he's throwing more strikes. Kind of important, right? Yep. You, you, throw stri- you throw strikes and things happen. But if you throw strikes and then also you have a new pitch that throws a lot more movement, then you, you want hitters to be off balance. So if he's filling up the strike zone, he's doing all those things, 
we're looking at somebody who, who's, you know, breakout could be pretty legit here. Do you, I mean, we're talking about a guy who had 12 losses last year and only five wins. And then you think to yourself, well, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think everybody had like 85 losses and three yeah. wins on their pitching staff. So that doesn't really help you. But the other thing that you look at, like you said, right, is that, you know, three, four years ago, he was in the double digit kind of K per, you know, K over nine in 11 games in uh, 2019. I mean, that's four years ago. What, what's going on? He obviously added a new pitch. What's the thing we talked about this offseason? Anybody does a new pitch? Anybody who goes to drive line, apparently, um, any of those types of things are things that you want to watch. And, you know, again, like Duran, right? He moved his hands up. That new pitch helps kind of change the hitter's eyes. That's one more thing they have to look out for. And if the movement's different than your other pitches, and but you have it from the same release point, it now changes everything in your whole repertoire. So definitely go out and grab Mitch Keller. I, I, I love what he's doing right now. Heck, I love everything the Pittsburgh Pirates are doing. Yeah. And definitely uh, ride this hot streak in, in hopefully longer than that. Yeah, I agree. And and if it wasn't, you know, good enough to talk about one pirate, let's go ahead and talk about another. And that's going to be Ji Juan Bay of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A um, little bit of multi position eligibility. Um, he qualifies depending on which league you're in, a few positions, but most likely, uh, you know, second pace in outfield. Um, this guy is someone that's still only 23 years old, I believe. Um, so he still has some growing pains to go, but right now he's second behind only Acuna for the stolen base lead. He's 10 for 11 in attempts this year. Um, he just had a three and a two stolen base game. Um, you know, he's got a possible platoon, but he's on the strong side. He's a lefty hitter. Um, he's been playing, um, you know, been playing really well. He plays again, second base is a bit of a of a, a abyss. So he's gonna give right. you that second base eligibility, he's gonna give you steals. And hey, no one's hotter. Well, the Rays are, but other than the Rays, no one's hotter than the Pirates right now. So get in on those pirates while you can. Ji Huan Bay of the Pirates at second base is a great ad, especially in um, some of the deeper leagues. What do you think? Yeah, so yeah, so Chris Schomer, uh, who's a Pirates correspondent, um, he he put this great thing. He and he puts this very uh, you know as we can only do it in, when we print media, right? When we write things, he's like he's swinging a hot bat. Yeah, no, it's scorching hot, but yes, he's swinging a hot bat. He's batting three thirty three with five runs scored, five stolen bases over his last seven games. That is nuts. And like he said, he. He sold three bases on Thursday, and he, he's just stealing constantly. Now, I know, bigger bags and, and not as many pickoff throws and all those things. But still, a steal is a steal, and we're stealing three bags in a yeah, game. That's the big I mean, if it, was, if it was so easy, everybody would be stealing three bags. He's going to score a ton of runs. He's stealing. He's not going to give you the power numbers, but who cares if he's giving you four other categories, which is great. Um, and like you said, everybody in the Pirates is hitting, just like everybody in the race. You want to get a piece of that, and and like you said, there's not a lot of second base. There's a huge drop off from the top of second base. So I love this pickup. And frankly, I'm starting to love the pirates. I'm starting to be like, how, how do else do I get pirates and raise on my team? Yeah. Uh, gr- great, great, uh, great position of need for a lot of play, uh, a lot of teams out there. And so definitely somebody should be uh, out there grabbing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next thing I want to talk about here is Mauricio Dubon, second base from for the Astros. You know, Tuve is still out. There's not really a timetable, I don't believe, on when he's coming back with a broken hand. Um, but Mauricio Dubon is actually filling in quite nicely. You know, that's being the year they didn't know who was going to fill in second base for Tuve, but I think they found their guy. He's currently slashing 330, 355, slugging 420. He's hit safely in 18 straight games, including seven multi hit games, kind of similar to what we talked about with Duran. Um, the multi hit games are very key. I mean, he started really hitting in the bottom of the order, but now he's been so hot and dominant that he's actually been moved up to the leadoff role which is huge in that kind of offense. The runs are going to be there. He's leading off, he's setting the table, right? He's getting on base in 18 trade games. Um, since moving up to the leadoff spot, he's got 11 runs scored and only 11% K rate. So he's doing what your leadoff guy should be doing, right? Getting on base, not striking out, and coming around to score. Um, and again, like, he's attached to a pretty dominant offense. Um, I would definitely be adding Dubon, especially if you need second base help, which most of us do, so. <laughs> so Mike Petrello on Twitter put the best tweet I've seen so far on Dubon um, out there. He says he doesn't walk or whiff or hit for power or get hit by a pitch. So he's absolute anti-king of the three true outcomes. So three true outcomes being yeah. strike out, walk, and a home run. So um, it's just it's just crazy to me that uh, no one in baseball ends with a playing uh, plate appearance with the ball in play more often. So he's at ninety two percent where a plate appearance ends up with a ball in play, I meaning something's going to happen, right? Ground ball, whatever the case may be. So Dubon's at ninety two percent. The next one is Nick Gordon. Just to kind of give you some names on this list, right? Travis 
Dionard, uh, Von Grisham, and Nico. I mean, th these are all kind of, you know, the names that we expected to see, but not Mauricio Dumont. I, I think this bat's too hot for the Astros, you know, to kind of take him out of the lineup, even if Altuve comes back. They got to find a place for him, but not to mention, right, everybody's getting injured. It's not like the Astros infield is a, you know, just picture of health either throughout the seasons, right? Bre Bregman always gets hurt and somebody. So they're going to find a place for this guy, especially if he keeps with this bat. Love, love, love watching anybody that's going to just kind of hit the ball and, and put it in play. I mean, like we just talked about the last guy, right? With Bay, you know, somebody who's going to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, put the ball in play and, and, you know, good things happen or, you know, with the broker, with the you know, home runs. This is another guy that's kind of going to be fun to watch on top of the statistical, you know, awesomeness that's going to be happening. Do you, I think a regression is going to come? Maybe. Uh, again, it's not great if you, you know, don't walk and, but it's also great you don't whiff. You know, putting the ball in play, especially when you have speed, always can cause something good to happen, right? You, you just kind of put put the ball in there and, and have some power behind it and maybe something good is going to happen. And obviously it is right now. So definitely, I think this is not just a short-term pickup. This is going to be a long-term pickup. Season long, if he's still out there, go grab him. Yeah, absolutely. Let's well, go ahead and wrap up the week five waiver wire show picks. Um, like I said, if you want to get access to that article, it's going to give you about another 15, 20 more names. Head on over to fancy sign up to become a member. But other than that, we will see you all next week.